Welcome to Let's Play Torchlight, where I try to find a town portal that I never placed. Water pours from the ruins above and falls down into oblivion. These caverns are lost to time, primal. The ember veins change as I descend, shifting colors, first hidden, then gleaming and glittering. It fascinates me now, as it did when I was young. Even the blight seems more pure here. My experiment may have succeeded if I had used ember from deeper in the mountain. Closer to the source, there is still the corruption of course, but with endless life, that becomes a small matter. Perhaps I will gain more here than I ever imagined. These are the Tutara Caverns. They're not as hard as the Asterius Ruins and are in fact pretty easy to go by. The enemies aren't too difficult and there's decent enough space to fight them in. The main enemy are these lizard type folks, the titular Tutara. A strategy of just running away and shooting is working really effectively against these guys. Especially since my minions can take care of any incoming damage. Also, this dungeon was relatively easy this time, simply because I was higher level than mostly anything I was encountering. I think this is because of the fact that I've been doing some side quests, like the down the hatch stuff. You may have noticed that there have been a few earthquakes in the game. That happens due to a certain creature below that we'll encounter soon enough. The idea is that there's this threat that's going to cave in all of Torchlight, but there's not really any timer here. I do find a few item upgrades, and I do gain a few levels in this dungeon set. It also seems at this point the Quest for Glory missions that I'm given are appearing on each floor. That is, I can kill a mini-boss on each floor and get a Quest for Glory reward. A nice change from before. Even though I'm really only halfway through the game, I've pretty much locked in my build now. I will be summoning a lot of nether rifts, I will have this little golem here, and I will be casting a bunch of offensive spells that I pick up on the way. I specialize in strong pets, and there's only really one or two spells down the line that I need to get. That's the thing about Torchlight and many point-and-click hack-and-slashes. You will get a lot of opportunities to take a lot of skills, but you simply do not have enough action bar space to use all of them. So you gotta pick and choose, and ultimately, when you have the choice between very few abilities that are very powerful, or a lot of abilities that are kind of not as powerful, you're probably going to go with the former. Specialization is just better. Now may be a good time to start explaining why I like Torchlight in games of its ilk. Now this is a question worth answering because it does seem like it can get repetitive and indeed I spend most of a good hour in this set wandering around trying to kill monsters in very similar ways. The interesting part of Torchlight and games like it is the character building. The ability to tweak stats as you go along and then practice those stats as you gain new abilities or gain new tiny tweaks to your character. It's a slow but steady building experience. The real hook, however, is that when you're building your character, at the same time, you're executing that character's build, and you get to experiment and see how the playstyle carries out in the game. So it's kind of this two-sided coin here, where one side is the stat development and the inventory management I so jokingly reference in my videos, and the other half is this gameplay, which doesn't look like much by itself, but when you add in that extra stat manipulation, you get something that can be very addictive very quickly. Maybe you've heard of this term called rotation in games like World of Warcraft, where you rotate the skills that you use. In many ways, dungeons games like Torchlight are 
using a similar idea, where you're picking and choosing certain skills to put in your action bar, and then trying to figure out a good way to synergize those skills in such a way that you have a productive output. And that's the real draw of Torchlight in games like it. Seeing how your character can progress and seeing how your gameplay develops with it. I think a lot of standard RPGs just reward the former side of inventory progression and such, where you're not really seeing gameplay execution. In Torchlight, however, you're very much rewarded with the tactile elements of playing your character when you pick these skills and you get to see how well they work out in a very real-time manner as opposed to some kind of turn-based arbitrary stat manipulation. This gives you very direct feedback as to how well your character is doing. Well, here we are at a named floor, so you know what that means. Time for a boss fight. I thought you would come. How could you resist the call of Ordrock? Once this Colossus has subdued you, your transformation will be complete. So this is the Colossus. My real worry with this guy was the fact that none of his enemy additions will drop corpses for me to resurrect my pets with. However, I've been gaining levels, and this guy has easy enough to dodge projectiles. My pets take care of this guy in relative ease. I just take care of the little ads, and things work out quite well my way. prevented him from ever reaching the Dwarven Fortress itself. Defeat the goblins, and we'll be close to our goal. You have begun a new quest. That's it for this episode. Next time, we'll be going into the Dwarven Ruins.